next speaker is Dr. Kirsty Ong. Um, she'll be covering real time digital holography um, for industrial biomanufacturing quality control. And um, this is an amazing uh, piece of technology. And if you haven't seen their, their exhibit, um, it's pretty impressive. Um, they uh, have monsters <laughs> that dance in, 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 in like Thomas Peak is there. Um, if you're, uh, your, your curiosity. Uh, Thank you, George. Like Thank you. And I'm happy to be here talking to you. And like Kirst said, come and look at the dancing monsters, come and look at uh, the exhibit, come and eat Swedish candy, see us at our booth. <laughs> Okay, so um, I'm going to talk about real time digital holography for industrial biomanufacturing quality control. I think that's the longest title yet. Um, okay, this was four. No, this was four. No? It's moving. Yes. So, this is the kind of images you can expect from digital holography. They're all reconstructed. It's all artificial coloring, but they're real cells doing their thing. Okay, so this is something that you, most of you here, are much more aware of than I am. I'm kind of new to this field of regenerative medicine. But we're in the process right now in this field where we need to scale up. There have been a lot of different trials, uh, testing of patients. All small scale, there is a G trial going on right now with eight patients. It's a Swedish UK thing going on with Parkinson. So you need, we need to scale up. And scaling up can be close to the patient or further away from the patient. For further away, you need transport. So it's a big thing, scaling up. And to make it all work, we come to what I'm more passionate about than that cell quality control. And for every step, you see the green check mark. For every individual step, there needs to be persistent, homogeneous quality controls that can be connected to each other all through the chain. It's not good to have one kind of quality control one end and a different one on the other end because you can't connect the data. The quality control should be in line with the production to make it smooth, to make it quick. It should be obviously self friendly even cytocentric, um, it should give both qualitative and quantitative sorry about that, <laughs> quantitative data. I'm trying to do the American thing and speak very quickly, and my camera is not really used to that. Um, <laughs> sorry. Oh, what did I do? It's the bottom one. Oh my god, I have no clue what I just said. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> I try not to. I, I promise I try not to. Okay, so our suggestion now from face holographic imaging is to use quantitative face imaging for as much of your quality control as just possible. Because it requires no sacrificing of cells. The cells are totally unimpaired by what you do when you try to do the quality control. There is no inherent phototoxicity unless you choose to trim on with an immense intensity of light. But that's your choice, it's not the technology. There is a wide range of data you can pull out quantitative, qualitative, a lot of different data. And they're all based on one thing, and that's what the error tries to, to show you in the image. What you see these lines here, as you know, Derek will use that. See the lines here, they're wave parts of light coming through. And when they pass through the cell, where the cell is denser, the light will be slightly delayed. So you can see it's kind of an imprint in the waveforms after they pass through the cell. That's what quantitative space imaging is measuring. That slight delay. So no label, no stains, very low light intensity, no effect on the cell, and you get this slight delay. And then everybody goes like, yeah, but so what? Good question. As an example of quantitative face imaging, I'm going to talk about digital holographic microscopy. That's what we are doing. And that little blue machine in the image, sorry, I'm not quite this way. This blue machine 
is what you can see in our exhibit as well. Um, so, this is light coming in. We split that thing in two groups. One will pass through the cell, one will give you unhindered, perfection, still perfect, in the back of the instrument. Once they merge, we capture a picture of that. It's called an interference pattern or a hologram. That's what we capture. So never ever a picture of a cell, just how the light was affected when it passed through the cell. Once we have that hologram, we put it into a computer. We will run an algorithm based on wavelength, based on, on, on the density of, of the cells, based on um, the wavelength of light, etc. Et it will calculate how thick the cell is in each pixel of that image. And then it will make a drawing, showing us how thick is it. So it will make topographic, nice 3D maps of the cell. You can see here, nicely in 3D. Oh, how far are your cells? How do you live? Because all this is digitalized, it's based on the wavelength of the light, it's calculated, we can get out an enormous amount of data from that. But also, really beautiful movies. So, because we have no phototoxicity, you can capture an endless amount of images. The longest we've done so far, two weeks, consistently, like every five minutes, two weeks, cells are still happy. They just move around, do their thing, some divisions, some contact seeking, some hugging, some chewing your neighbors. <laughs> um, and we can quantify that. Because, again, ah, I know you told me about how to handle this, I'm sorry. Okay, so one. Uh, this is not my thing, right? This is where I wanted to be. So, in every picture here, you can see the thicker the cells are, the whiter they are. That's a nice way to represent it. If you look at the cells in the profile, it's kind of clear where the background is and where the cell is. So, using computer algorithms, you see, you identify in each picture where is the cell. Once you have that, you start to get all the data out. So, morphological data, the best amount from an individual cell. But if you have a whole picture of cells, you can start comparing them. And you will realize that cells are highly individual. You think you have a homogenous, monolayer culture, maybe even a cell line that is clean, right? But no, they're all different, really different. Um, and here we have even mixed two cell lines to show you that it's easy to find subpopulations which are different with no labels on stain. Let's see if I can manage to make the movie move. So, this cell is dividing, right? Plain, not so straight. But what we can do is to follow it. How, how, how do the cells move? The mother cell, the daughter cells, we can quantify that. We can from one single cell, see how did it behave? Is the cell volume increasing and then suddenly dropping when the cell divides? You get the hard data of everything. And you can see cell family trees building. And you will realize that in your homogenous culture, there is about 10 cells maybe that never move, never change, never talk to anyone, the introverts. You have the ones that move around consistently and they will uh, proliferate, they will create huge families. They're very different. Okay, so I also now, after I hopefully convinced you about the usefulness of, of holographic imaging and QPI, talk to you about a highly interesting project we're in here at Rendo. And it's a Rendo supported project in the smart manufacturing project. Two minutes. I promise I will speak really fast again. <laughs> Um, so we're there with Biospherics, SAS, um, Kayagen, and it's trying to set up a smart manufacturing line. Uh, we, we, Biospherics just told you about their equipment, amazing. SAS will help us with the data, and, and um, Dr. Wolf was present to talk about how to handle a lot of the data. And Kayagen will help us with the omics analysis. So what we will do is to set up. Yeah, in the, 
in the test bed using the iceberg chamber with uh, one of our blue microscope inside to set up a production line, a short one, where we have uh, MSC cells trying to see how we can best get the data out that we need and compile it into something comprehensible. And then in the end, what we will create is what we call the cell report card. Just imagine you're at school, right? You have a report card. It will follow the student through all the years in school, get every detail, and you can keep it until you, you retire and your children can inherit it, right? That's what we envision, a cell report card, a biomanufactured cell that will follow the cell through every stage of the process and that you can go back and look later what's in it, what happened to that cell batch. See, you treat a two-year-old diabetes, they can look at this report card when they're 90 to see what happened. That's the goal that we have in this project. Okay. And thank you. Was that less than two minutes?